Hi, I'm Garrett with IDC Woodcraft and I want to thank you for coming to this channel where we are going to be talking about stopping before you slap that part on that CNC router and hit the go button and checking yourself. What I want to relay to you here is when you've spent a good chunk of time designing up some kind of part in your software, it's got a lot of nice detail on it and you start running on the router and important little details start to chip away you know break off it's frustrating it's tedious to repair and we want to avoid that ahead of time so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take you into a project that I've been hired to do and where I found some problems or had some concerns and my engineering mentality kicked in and said what can go wrong here so that's what I want to relate to you and get you in that habit of stopping so you can make a good part the first time okay so just quickly before we get into that this channel is for two reasons it's for the CNC beginner that person who's interested in it and checking it out or the person who's just gotten it very green at it and doesn't really understand it I've got a lot of CNC good background and there are really I've had such a hard time finding videos out on YouTube land that teach the tradesman level for the beginner to get you up to speed as quickly as possible. So I'm, I took on the task and so I'm so glad that I can give you my knowledge to become an expert CNCer. We are going to be talking about routers today. Um, and uh, I lost my train of thought. Yeah, the other reason for this channel is the business end of it. Right? A lot of people are interested in turning it into a business. I mean, a lot of people don't want to be in work anymore. They're tired of the 9 to 5 rat race, want to generate income from a creative side in them. And CNC is an amazing way of doing that. So I want to help you not only get good with your CNC equipment, but become an entrepreneur at the same time. So you can start generating revenue doing something that you do love to do. Okay, so last thing, there are a bunch of links down below. Uh, I want you to go take a look at that after this video. I'll remind you again, uh, particularly if you're a beginner. Uh, and I started the CNC Entrepreneurs Facebook group. There was no support out there for like us CNCers who are, who are amazing designers. So you'll want to sign up to that. Please answer all the questions. And uh, that's about it. Why don't we just dive on in to VCarve and I'll show you what I uh, came across. Now, if you use something else like easel or something like that, just stay here. This is about checking yourself no matter what software you use, because I don't want you to break a good part that you designed. So let's dive in and I'll walk you through my thought process, what I've done to check and correct a couple of problems. Here we go. Okay, we're in VCarve and I have a friend who asked me to create a sign from this logo. Now, I'll tell you a little backstory. Uh, she's a good friend of mine, and she's been in that place in life where she's really starting to question herself uh, and the things that she done uh, has done throughout her life, uh, focused on other people and what have you. And so it's kind of caught up on her, when I say focused, pleasing other people instead of doing what she wanted to do. So she is finally it's just kind of caught up with her and she started working on this farm and just it, it's been so good for her soul that she said i want to give them something back and so she said can you make this sign a sign out of their logo and i said well sure send it to me and so i got this eros group logo and i saw it and I was, oh this is going to be a cakewalk and so I started uh, playing with it a little bit. Now, this is the sign I've uh, come up with. Very simple, kind of stays with the elegance of the simplicity of the, of the logo. Uh, we are still debating whether we want the est uh, established in 2020. But let's just dive right into the issues that I started to see. So first of all, I want you to see this tree. You know, everything else here is very simple. Well, that ladybug's going to be a little bit of a fun one i'm going to do that in a relief 2.5 d but we're going to focus on the tree so this is a very pretty elegant logo 
But there's a lot of little things on this logo. This sign is going to be 24 wide, roughly, a little bit shorter. And so you can kind of get a feel. These little leaves are going to be a little small. That's not where I ran into my first problem. The first problem was when I did bitmap tracing on it. So I'm going to show you that. So I highlighted the picture and I'm not going to walk you through specifics through this details because I, I want to really get to the meat of this, which is checking yourself before you get on the, on the router. So I'm going to run through where some of the problems showed up. I'm going to have VCarve trace the bitmap around this tree using the defaults that it decided to pick out. And I do a preview. And you can see right away that this elegance in this tree has been lost. And when we zoom in, you can see that it didn't really trace the lines where we want it to. Now, I fiddled with the filters a little bit, these guys right over here, and I just couldn't get it to go where I wanted to. So I had to start tweaking a lot of it myself with the nodes. And I'm going to cancel this. Now I'm going to accept that and create and show you what it looks like so the first problem I ran into is this has got to be cleaned up you know this does not look like a tree anymore and this in these areas right here and right here so I did a lot of work to it and I've cleaned it up there so I got to a point where I'm feeling pretty good all I gotta do is take care of miss little ladybug here and I'm just looking at it and thinking something's bothering me about this and I'm just looking at these leaves going, these things are going to come out really small. And so there's a couple ways that you, yeah, you know, this can be carved. It can be done with a V-carve on the leaves and on the words. I can't V-carve the tree. V-carving is actually groove cutting within a parameter or, or a, per, a, a boundary. And so this is such a wide boundary. I don't have the tool that I need to actually cut that on a v-carve and it wouldn't look natural because it would have a, a line up to the middle up all, all around every one of these would be a line in there and i don't want that i want to keep the elegance of the simplicity of the tree so we are going to go over to the 3d toolpath section and i want to show you the finished product so let's expand that screen now the green is not going to be there that's for clarity so I can see things on here. I'm actually going to, the words will be black and the tree will be green uh, as the logo is. But if I turn it on the side, you can see now the way I'm going to be cutting this. So I'm going to be doing what's called a pocket, uh, pocketing toolpath, where it's basically going to follow, uh, cut out a pocket within profiles that I select. And Ultimately, this is what it is. And it looks really nice. I mean, I'm really happy with it. I changed a lot of stuff on this. You wouldn't know it unless you really compared the two logos. But here's what I was starting to get concerned when I'm looking at this going, something's wrong here. It, these leaves are really small, really tiny. And I'm thinking if I am cutting them in a depth like that, and they're going to be straight cut, they're not going to have a taper cut to them. I might go ahead and switch over to that, but that's okay. That's part of why we do this. But you can see the graphics don't look so good when you zoom in. That's not my fault. That's the software. But you can see it just kind of goes straight down, which means we're going to have little pieces hanging up there. And as you know, with the wood, they can break. So what I decided to do was run a first a uh, profile toolpath with a pointed tool. So when I say profile toolpath, that is this guy right here. And a profile toolpath will go, will trace lines that you select. So if I select that line right there, right here, the profile, the tool will follow along the, the, the line. Now let's go in. I will explain this a little bit to you. Um, what I'm going to do is actually put this on the router with a sharp pointed tool with a sh very shallow angle, 30 degree angle. And I'm going to have it literally trace out everything that's on here. So what I'm doing is you can see up here that a depth of cut is a 0 0.03, which is still a little deeper than I want to go, but that's what I'm going with. And then I'm using 
I'm going to use the oh, wrong one. That's from my tool library. I want to get to the tool library, which is right here. I'm going to use a 30 degree quarter inch diameter of VBET. And by the way, uh, when you set up your tool libraries, make sure the diameter of the tool is set up in there because VCarve or your software will interpret it slightly differently and you won't get quite what you want. So now I've got that. And interestingly enough, at such a shallow, oops, I gotta go 0.03. There we go. All right. And I am going to cut on the line. I can go outside the line, I can go inside the line. When you do a profile cut, let's just, let's just run through this real quick. In profile cuts, it's gonna trace along a line like this. Now, let's just say you have a quarter inch diameter end mill or a cutting tool that's gonna cut, right? You can either run that tool along the line, which is over here, the command on. And that tool will follow along the line based on the center of the quarter inch diameter end mill. You can put it on inside the line. And that means that the tool will run on the inside with the edge of the tool along the line. And likewise, if you go outside the line, it'll run along the outside of the, of the line with the tool edge cutting at the line unless you spe uh, specify an offset, which is this number here. I'm not gonna go into that right now. I just want you to understand what profile is. We are gonna use a pointed tool, very shallow cut, and we're gonna cut right on the line. What I wanna do is actually draw these things out so I can actually see their actual size there on a piece of scrap. Um, I'm gonna use particle board. So I'm just gonna go with that and I'm gonna calculate and it is calculating and it has calculated and it is not showing my tool path for some reason because I did not select my item. So I have to go back in there and select the entire group here. So I'm going to go over here and I'm going to take a window and I'm going to go like that. Now we have everything selected. I'm going to not do that boundary on a ladybug because I know that's an issue for me right now. So, all right, then we'll recalculate. So now you see I've got tool path drawn all around here. Let's, let's clean this up so you can see that. There you go. Open this picture up. So everything is there. It's, uh, this, so now the router is going to draw a line on everything. So we are going to go out to the router and check this out in real time to see what it's actually going to look like. So we now have a piece of particle board on the router and you can see the tools now starting to cut out the leaves. It's just drawing them out. I actually probably could have gone a little bit more shallow on this to clean it up and sped the tool up quite a bit. But what I am going to do is speed up this footage so you can just watch it for a minute and we will uh, be talking again in just a moment. So now I have opportunity to look at the detail and so you can see the sizes of some of the different things that I would be cutting out as far as these leaves. But I can see that I could possibly have a problem here with the little piece breaking off as it's machining, especially like here. So I'm going to have to increase the size of some of these leaves so that I don't run that risk so much. I decided I wanted to run this out and really get a good look at it. So, interestingly enough, all these little guys held up at a 0.1 depth, but I am not going to go that deep on this tree. I'm going to just keep it at 0.05. Uh, I apologize, this is a 0.05 here. I'm going to keep it at that depth. I was surprised all these little leaves held up. What broke on me were the branches. 
That I didn't expect. Oh, I do have a broken leaf here. Now I have to expect some of that with this wood since it's cheap particle board. Depending on the wood I'm going to get, this is not so bad. But I will go ahead and increase the size of all these little tiny leaves so I don't have breakage on my part. So that was the train of thought that I went through with this part. And hopes uh, in relaying this information to you that you will start to kind of see, okay, I have to be a little more careful sometimes when I'm doing this detail stuff. Also, you want to keep in mind the grain of the wood. Remember, there's a bunch of links down below. Go check them out, read through it, especially if you're a beginner. And I think that's about it. I'd love to hear from you what your thoughts are, some of the ways that you compensate or look for potential issues so you can avoid them. All right, this is Garrett. Super glad you stayed around so I could teach you more of my knowledge. You're going to be an awesome creator. I can't wait to see what you do. And I will talk to you next time.